So again, when I, when I sit down with a lot of CEOs, I ask them all this one question, and that is, what keeps you up at night? And um, I get a variety of answers, but it, it's all dealing with the same thing. It's where is that next big idea? You know, we had a great quarter last quarter, but we're kind of forecasting ahead. I have some concerns. I don't know where the great ideas are. So basically what it comes down to is how can we innovate? And the challenge today is that industry dictates who the innovators become. And what I mean by that is, for example, in pharmaceuticals, scientists become the innovators. In technology companies, it's usually the CTO's office. But how do we democratize that process? How do we allow everybody to participate? Whether it's incremental innovations, building upon existing technologies you already have or processes that you already have and making them more efficient or better, or is it just cost-saving mechanisms as well? And I've come to realize that a lot of companies struggle with sometimes the guy with the biggest paycheck is the one that people listen to in terms of decision-making processes or where the organization is headed. But if we spin that on its head and we realize that the people who are really in best position to innovate are the very people who do the jobs themselves, they're the ones that are very much in the know, not only with their own line of work, but chances are they're very in tune to what their competitors are doing as well. They're in touch with customers. They're hearing what's going on. So I created a new methodology in this book called improvisational innovation that completely democratizes this process of being in the moment. Um, and what it is, is it's a formalized process around a very specific timeline that allows anybody within an organization, large or small, to be able to participate in the innovation process. So I really wanted to figure out ways where anybody could participate and be protected in the process. So improvisational innovation recognizes that anybody can participate, whether it deals with their day-to-day -day job or they want to spend time doing things that they're very passionate about, protects them in the process, and then provides a process where leadership gets involved and recognizes that there's a commitment financially to allow this person to experiment. There's a time commitment that gives this person up to 20% over a three month period and also enables this person to build out a team, a small team, so that they can get this project to a, a, prototype, a prototyping stage. And then it's a matter of working within the organization, seeking partnerships inside the organization in addition to outside the organization but individual business units that can potentially adopt this project as their own. And so call it what you want, but it is a formal innovation process that can exist as a team within HR or it can be a small team outside of HR, but it is a team that just focuses on innovation in the moment, improvisational innovation that allows anybody to participate in the process.